Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Logic Bots. Before we start this episode, let me give you a friendly reminder. If you want this series to continue, then let me know with a thumbs up. It has been a little bit scarce with thumbs ups on this series recently. Not that I'm mad about it or so, but it's a clear indication for me whether or not it's worth to actually continue with certain projects or move on to other games. And I do have a lot of games lined up, so we don't necessarily need to play through entire games. Logic Bots was actually something I wanted to do just for a couple of episodes in order to introduce you into the game. However, then the interest justified uh, actually continuing with the game. But with that out of the way, let's actually get started with today's episode. What we want to do is the single motor challenge, because as usual, you guys have given me plenty of tips on how to actually continue. The problem about this level was that we only have this frame at our disposal. This frame can only control one motor and therefore we did run into a couple of issues. Now, I did have a look through all of the parts and I saw that this stepper arm is being introduced in this level. Also, the motor joint, that is actually interesting. So with that bad boy, we could move things out of the way. This is like an attachment that we can control quite accurately. Anyways, let's go ahead and pick up some wheels first. Or maybe we do the stepper arm, I don't really know. No, let's pick up the wheels first, but I'm gonna activate my snap line right there. Maybe we're gonna add a new one. There we go. And this way we will hopefully place stuff more or less evenly. Now, I want to place this guy, let me see, probably on this side. I do not know, actually. It's probably not that important, though. I'm just gonna place it here, and this wheel has to turn anti-clockwise. So, there we go. And then, I want to choose the stepper motor, because we need another tool that we can control. Actually, it's called the stepper arm, but there we go. Makes no difference to me. We have the stepper arm in place and this thing is going to rotate around. Now, unfortunately, I haven't figured out how to actually attach a wheel to this thing. I also tried it with uh, some of these extensions. Maybe we have to use a hinge joint. I don't know. Can we place a wheel like that? No. So, I decided to do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna go with a couple of these extensions. We're gonna place one of those guys right here. Seems to be fine. As much in the center as possible, I think that's good. And then we're gonna attach even more here on the top so that it comes out of the wheel just a little bit. And I'm gonna make my own little wonky wheel. I mean, I cannot see a reason why this wouldn't actually work. I haven't really tried it yet, but I have enough experience in those games to be almost positive about this. I already know how the stepper motor turns around. That's something I have tested. However, we need a little bit of help. Let's go to the extensions and add a circuit board because we're gonna need at least a knot gate and a couple of splitters. Cool. So let me actually see. We probably, yeah, we do need some stabilization, but from the looks of it, the wheel is going to work. It's gonna be wonky, but working. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach a wheel on the front, which is this side. We're gonna add a caster ball right there. And oh no, this doesn't work. I do remember that. We had the problem in the previous episode already. So I'm gonna place that bad boy here. And then I should be able to place a caster ball like so. And also uh, something we need is a line sensor, of course. And now this is pointing into the wrong direction, isn't it? Yeah, it's pointing up. We want this to be rotated zero degrees and place it right there. Beautiful. This one here is going to detect the line and we should be good to actually set the circuit. I'm going to add my single motor right here so that I know where to place the circuit board. And also the stepper arm is now representing the other part of the motor. The stepper arm I can set to rotate just like with a wheel. I can set two different levels of speed. So I have to power this up if I want it to go fast and I can also reverse the direction. Now, I'm not yet sure in which direction it's uh, gonna turn, probably anti-clockwise and this might be the wrong one. But let's go ahead and add our line sensor and we're gonna do something similar we already did before, which is add a knot, no, that's an or gate. Look at all the gates we have, man. What I wanted is a knot gate. We're gonna place that bad boy here and we're also gonna add a triple splitter because we need to activate all of these guys and also a normal splitter for the line sensor. 
So there we go, let's do this. I'm gonna hook this up with the line sensor. The line sensor, whenever we detect the line, we want the normal wheel to turn. And if we don't detect the line, thus the nut gate, we want to turn on the stepper arm. Now, I possibly need to reverse the direction, I'm actually not even sure. And then we want a high speed, should be good. Uh, let's actually test it out already. Okay, this is clearly turning into the wrong direction, but you can see it, it's kind of acting like a wheel, more or less. But that's what I thought, that I am, you know, when I have a 50% chance in succeeding, I'm always choosing the wrong ones. But that's something that happens to me all the time. Whenever, for instance, there is a door that opens up in four ways, but only one way really works. You know, you have these double doors that could go into either direction. It's always the last possibility that works for me. I don't know what it is about it. But there we go guys, it's kind of working, it is wonky, but I didn't expect anything else. As soon as I saw this in the comment section, I was pretty much sure that it's going to work. Oh, oh, okay, something went really bad right there. I think we need to stabilize this robot, yeah. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But it should be an easy fix. I mean, we, we already have so many parts on this robot, it almost doesn't matter anymore. But I'm gonna place a stabilization wheel on the other side. Also a caster ball, just like that. And now we shouldn't tip over anymore. At least I hope so. Let's speed this up and see for ourselves. We cannot do within the time limit. I need to find out how to attach a wheel to these things. That would be really practical. But there we go. We are approaching the finish line. Beautiful. And wow, we did it even within budget. I'm actually a little bit surprised about that. But that's cool enough with me. Let's have a look into the campaign. Okay, what does sound interesting? Let's have a look at the vacuum clean. We already checked it out in the previous episode. We basically have to clean the carpet of this room. So that means we have to avoid objects and just try to reach every corner. And of course we get a new type of bot for that. So that could be interesting. Let's also see what we have within the sensors. We have uh, no dust sensor or something along these lines, but we probably want to have proximity sensors for the front and then I don't know yet. Unfortunately, the functional parts are disabled, so there are gonna be no new parts. Let me actually have a look at the level. We start here. So what happens if we always go towards the left side, for instance, just like with a labyrinth? So whenever we detect something in the front, we are gonna turn towards the left and then we would probably detect something here. Hmm. Yeah, we would have to observe that a little bit. Maybe let's just do it. Okay, I'm gonna need a couple of snap lines here. Maybe wheels. Oh man, wheels. Good. Now that we have our snap lines, we can only use these wheels. Wow, they're really small. There we go. This is the right side, so this should turn normally. And this is the left side should also go normally. Okay, now let's actually test it out. We are facing towards the bottom, but we actually might want that. Maybe let's not add a caster wheel. Oh, look at that! The floor is actually clean below here. So it seems as though this thing is turned on the entire time. Let's actually see. Left motor, right motor. Yeah, there's no functionality to turn on the vacuum cleaner. Good, that means we can go ahead and add a proximity sensor. I'm gonna add it here. This might be too far. You know, we want to go really close towards the objects. Let me see, maybe we can add something like that. And then we add the proximity sensor as low down as we can. So the stick is actually a little bit long, to be honest. I was just too lazy to adapt it. But there we go, 150 millimeters should be enough. And we can install the proximity sensor. Beautiful. Okay, time to have a look at the circuit board. As soon as we detect something, we want to turn towards the left side. That means the right motor has to go and the left motor has to go into reverse direction. So let's set that up right now. Maybe actually we do it a little bit easier. Maybe we just enable both of the motors. Where's this thing? Right there, the dual switch. We're gonna enable the left motor and the right motor. So it just goes. And whenever we detect something, then the left motor should reverse. So that would be, you know, easy, with even without gates. But let's see if that works. So detecting, oh yeah, look at that, nice. Now oh, we are cleaning up and now it should just turn and turn. Yeah, okay. I don't think you're supposed to actually vacuum 
below the table, but who knows. There we go, looking good so far. And now it's basically just a matter of luck, more or less, I would presume. Maybe we are gonna do the same thing over and over right now. Yeah, it looks as though we are in a vicious circle. Uh, maybe we can do it? Okay, we, we made it past the table now. Okay, that's good, that's good. We have almost reached, well, we have 25% of the carpet cleaned. I totally forgot how much you have to clean. It's like 60% or so, but it seems to be working out. We're gonna go straight and then we might be in a vicious circle again. But who knows? We made it out the first time. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, looking better. Check this out. Turn, take some of that. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because I think that's gonna be the end of us. Yeah, it's not good enough yet. I wonder, do we have flip-flop gates? Oh no, there are no gates here. Do we maybe have to work with an additional sensor? This could be the case. If I added another proximity sensor... Oh no, now I need the stick to be bigger after all. <laughs> I can just add a second one. There we go. Okay, there we go. So now if we detect something on the right side then we want to turn left no actually i think we have to place it on the other side for this to make sense there we go should also work out beautiful we're gonna go back into the circuit board place this proximity sensor and this should reverse the other motor so now we have kind of more randomness possibly i don't know yet <laughs> Oh, this is a little bit more wonky for sure, but I think we're gonna go a different route this time. Yeah, definitely. So now it will not know where to... Oh, okay, it actually did what I hoped it would. And now we're gonna go right there. Okay, please do something different. You're supposed to clean this in 2 minutes 45 seconds. So it seems as though there is a little bit of randomness involved anyways. Ah, there we go. Finally, I made it out of this vicious loop. I've been in there for quite a bit, as you can see, over three minutes. But I didn't lose faith that at some point it's gonna act differently. And yes, it did. And hopefully this is not gonna be our downfall. No, no, it's actually working. So far, so good. And now, I was hoping that when we hit this plant, it's gonna rotate into the other direction. At some point, we're gonna go towards the right side of this plant. It's gonna work, guys. Let's uh, speed things up again. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. It actually did exactly... Oh, no. We're going back into the vicious circle. Oh, this was actually perfect. Wow. We did it, guys. We freaking did it. Look at that. Even within budget. And we, we did the special achievement. What was that? Complete the level without using any laser rangers or ultrasonic rangers. Cheapest robots. Nine parts. Beautiful. We're gonna go back into the campaign menu and I would say one more we can actually do. Walking robot. That sounds absolutely amazing. Oh, so I guess we will only have special parts available. Let's actually have a look at that. Build a logic bot that can walk in a straight line. We have a budget of 800. That seems like a lot. Okay, well, let's go ahead and have a look at the frame. Wow, it's gonna be this frame. What the heck? Let's have a look at the functional part. So, right angle hydraulic piston, then we got a sprung foot. <gasps> oh man, this is amazing. This is a sprung pivoting foot with a rubber base to allow for good traction. It can be used as feet for walking logic bots as it will grip the floor well and pivot to counteract leg movements. So, let me see. We need to do something with the hydraulic thing and then the sprung foot. Let's actually grab one of those. Uh, let me see. How would these be attached? We could attach them here and then they would do what? Hmm, it feels like I'm missing something here. I mean, it would just turn this foot straight. That's... Is that what we want? Maybe already. I need to test this out a little bit. I'm gonna place another one right there. Seems to be fine. Oh, actually, I totally messed this up. Of course, we need to uh, kind of cover the other direction. So let's set this to 90 degrees. Place one right there and the other one on the other side. Good. Now let's name those guys. This is gonna be the right leg. And we got the left leg. Now we need these sprung feet. Okay, but let's see. Let's see if I attach this. Okay, they only have, you know, a certain angle to them. So theoretically, I have to attach these differently if we made something like that. 
I'm just going to place one of those, then I'm gonna grab this guy and I want to attach it here, but without the angle this time. Though it needs to turn 180 degrees to be angled correctly. There we go. How about that? This would make it walk into this direction, though we need to go into the other direction. Man, everything has to be so complicated. Let's add it right here. This seems to be appropriate to keep the balance, I'm not sure. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Good, one more foot right there. Beautiful. Now we need uh, extensions, probably circuit board. Hmm. Wow, they have a very large circuit board available, but what I need is something else. I think we find that within this menu. I'm just gonna place this guy right here. Then we got motors. Ah, we could attach it to the motors, of course. But that is a bad idea for now. I'm just gonna place the, let's see, left leg probably, then the right leg. Okay. Oh man, we do not have remote control for this one. I totally planned this out with remote control in mind. Oh, you must be kidding me. Okay, we have at least a delay to maybe test a few things. I'm gonna place this dual switch and for now I'm gonna activate the left leg and after a certain delay of let's say 5 seconds we're gonna activate the right leg just to see what happens. Oops, okay, I hit the start button and holy cow, this uh, left leg did go. Let's check this out again. Wow, it's, it's like instant. So what happens if we don't do any of that? Okay, at least this works. Ah, I see, the 5 seconds count like from when I make this connection or so. Anyways, it was a stupid idea, let's do something else, I have another idea. We're going to use the stepper arms instead, let's add a couple of these snap lines. We're gonna add a stepper arm right here and also a stepper arm on the other side. Then we're going to add one of those just like before we make our own feet that are a little bit wonky. So if I attach this right there, we should be able to take some of these guys and place them here potentially. There we go, right? This should be a walking robot if I do this for all the sides. Let me test this out, I'll be right back. Oh guys, I just discovered a couple of new sensors. I should have a look into these menus first. A motion sensor that measures the acceleration due to gravity to calculate its orientation. Oh, so we can keep balance with this thing. Oh man. Single axis gyroscope measures the change in rotation around the axis perpendicular to the gyroscope's face and outputs. Oh, let me know what perpendicular is. That sounds funny enough. That is insane, but I'm still gonna test my idea first. There we go, we are set and oh, this might actually be too... No, it's it's all cool, it's all cool. Okay, this is gonna be fun, oh man. However, we have to <laughs> do something about these stepper arms. There we go. So we basically want them to be on the entire time, I would presume. Now, one is gonna go into the wrong direction. Let's see, uh, probably the right one, yeah. But look at that, it's kind of working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a signal splitter and hope stepper arm 2 is the right one. I should have labeled them, but what you're gonna do? We're gonna reverse the direction. There we go. And... Oh no! I didn't think of that possibility. <laughs> That I have to take care of this, I didn't think, but maybe if we just made this object longer, then it couldn't turn around. There we go. Yes! <laughs> we just have to hope that we can uh, make it through. No, probably not. Though it, it, it doesn't, you know, give me a failure here. As long as we touch the finish line, we might be able to do it. Okay, we probably have to go over the finish line with the body. Let's try this again. Do it a little bit faster. Yeah, I mean, this is more straight than before. There we go. <laughs> uh, but I feel like I still have to learn how to do real robots in this game. But there we go, we did it. Even within time. Let's have a look at this once again. I want to repeat that and kind of have a look at it slower. I mean, this is amazing. The walking robot. This is possibly the most beautiful thing I've ever done. Okay, cool. But with that out of the way, I would say we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>